Welcome back to Walking the Line from Research to Practice. This is episode three, where we're going to be talking about the ESET trial. Again, my name is Salim Rezai. I'm an emergency medicine physician down in San Antonio, Texas. So the ESET trial is a randomized clinical trial of 400 patients in status epilepticus. And essentially, they got randomized to one of three arms. They got levetiracetam at 60 milligrams per kilogram with a max dose of 4,500 milligrams. They got valproate at 40 milligrams per kilogram, a max of 3,000 milligrams, or they got phosphenitoin 20 milligrams per kilogram at a max dose of 1,500 milligrams. Now, before you could get randomized into one of these three arms, you had to receive two rounds of appropriately dosed benzodiazepines. And so what do we mean by appropriately dosed benzodiazepines? So for lorazepam, this was four milligrams. For diazepam, this was 10 milligrams. And for midazolam, this was 10 milligrams. Now, many people fear that if they give these types of doses of benzodiazepines in a patient with status epilepticus, they're going to end up intubating the patient. Now, a couple of things about this. Number one, if you have a patient in status epilepticus, you want to get them to stop seizing as quickly as possible. If they do end up getting intubated, this is not a loss, in my opinion. You basically want to stop the emergency. Them going on a ventilator is not the negative thing that's happening here. The second thing is is that there are several observational trials looking at giving appropriately dosed benzodiazepines in patients with status epilepticus, and they did not find an increased risk of requiring intubation with appropriate dose benzos. So that's one of the important messages I took away from this study is that we want to dose our benzodiazepines appropriately. The next thing I want to mention before I get into the results is that when we look at the dosing of the anti-epileptic medications, specifically levetiracetam, 60 milligrams per kilogram with a max dose of 4,500 milligrams, at least in my practice, I was giving one or two grams or 1,000 to 2,000 milligrams. I think it's important to also make sure we're dosing our anti-epileptics correctly. And in this study, they actually used that dosing. So let's get to the results. So the primary outcome was cessation of seizure and a normal mental status at 60 minutes. And it's crazy to me that they were okay letting these people sit for 60 minutes, not to mention the time before they ever arrived that they were potentially seizing. But it depends how you want to look at the results. But for levetiracetam, the success of the primary outcome was only 47%. For valproate, it was 46%. And for phosphenitoin, it was 45%. So kind of okay when we're looking at our second line agents. So there's really three messages I would want you to take away kind of evaluating this study. So the first one I've already mentioned, which is make sure you dose your benzodiazepines appropriately. I think that we oftentimes underdose these medications for fear that we're going to intubate patients. And I would say in a neurologic emergency like status epilepticus, getting the seizure to stop as soon as possible is the priority. And if we do end up intubating a few patients, I don't think this is a negative. So that's one thing to keep in mind. The second message I'd want you to take away is that if you look at this study as a glass half full, in other words, We said about 47 to 48% of the patients had cessation of seizure and normal mental status at one hour. Well, then what I would tell you is that in addition to the benzodiazepines, we want to truncate the time in which we're getting our anti-epileptics on board. So the patient gets one round of benzo, they get their second round of benzo. The way you truncate that timeline is you ask for your anti-epileptic at the time of the second benzodiazepine because it takes time for pharmacy to mix this or to go to the Pixis and get it to get it up on a pump. And so what I would argue is is that if you're getting to your second round of benzo, that's when you should be asking for that anti-epileptic. By the way, based on this study, levetiracetam would be my go-to anti-epileptic agent. It's the agent I feel like is the safest, has the best side effect profile, and my staff feels most comfortable with. So that would be my choice. But again, I think it depends on what system you work in, which agent you end up using. The good news is they're all about equally as effective. Now, the third message, which is somebody looking at this study and saying, well, the glass is half empty. All these agents kind of sucked. None of them really got us to convert enough patients out of status epilepticus. Well, then you're thinking about anesthetic agents. You're thinking about things like ketamine or propofol. And these would be dosed at one milligram per kilogram, 
up to two milligrams per kilogram. The nice thing about these agents is they do have anti-epileptic properties, but the thing you have to really remember here is because they're anesthetic agents, you're probably going to be intubating more patients if you go to these as your second line agents. Now, I'm not advocating one way or the other. I'm going to leave that up to your clinical judgment and the system that you work in, but there's two ways to look at this study. So what's the bottom line of this study? I think the first thing is, is don't let these patients seize for an hour. I don't think that's a good thing, and I think most people would agree. You can look at this study as glass is half full or glass is half empty. Whichever one you pick, it doesn't really matter. Just know that pick one and go with it. I think if you're going with the glass is half full, pick the anti-epileptic that you find to be the easiest for you, is the easiest for you to use within your system, and has one of the best side effect profiles. For me, this is going to be levetiracetam, but make sure you dose that correctly. If you look at this as the glass is half empty, then pick one of your anesthetic agents. This would be propofol or ketamine. And just realize that by using these agents, they do have good anti-epileptic properties, but you will most likely end up intubating more patients. For a more detailed breakdown of this study, you can go on over to rebelem.com. If you go over to the right side of the page, up at the top right, there's a search function. If you put in ESET, you can actually pull up the detailed breakdown of this study that I've written in the past and hopefully this is helpful and let me know what agents you're using for your second line are you going anti-epileptic or are you going anesthetic what experiences do you have and until next time